In the previous episode, we experimented with a smart drive-by-wire throttle system on our Saturn Coupe. Today we're going to combine the smart throttle experiment with the lean burn experiment and see if we can improve the fuel economy a little bit more on our Saturn. If you missed our previous episode, well, I recommend you give it a watch if this sort of stuff interests you. Anyway, just a quick recap on the smart throttle experiment, and by the way, sometimes I refer to this gizmo as the robo throttle. So at the end of the previous episode, we were able to squeeze 47 miles per gallon out of this crummy little Saturn. Now we didn't break any laws of thermodynamics. The car was able to deliver this phenomenal fuel economy by just changing the driving habits. Well, sort of. You see, the driver didn't change a bit, and all we did was filter the driver's inputs through a computer and let the computer manage the throttle. It should also be mentioned that we did our testing in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, on a 33-mile loop with little to no traffic. We tuned the smart throttle to allow the car to go as fast as possible while still maintaining respectable fuel economy. So on average, the car was able to maintain 60 to 61 miles per hour once we got it up to speed. Now getting the car up to speed, well, that was one of the shortcomings with the robo throttle, and in this episode, we'll address that issue. It'll certainly be interesting to see how that affects our fuel economy. So the robo throttle is only half of today's experiment, and like I mentioned a few moments ago, we're going to combine the robo throttle experiment with the lean burn system that we put together a few episodes ago. Now the lean burn system that we tested in episode 18 did not perform as expected, and we actually lost a few miles per gallon when the lean burn system was engaged. Now a lot of folks were definitely paying attention during that experiment, and concluded that the poor results were due to insufficient ignition timing, or in other words, the ignition timing needs to be advanced several degrees over the factory setting in order to give the leaner air fuel mixture time to sufficiently burn. Well shucks, that's impossible to do with the stock PCM in the Saturn. You see the ignition timing is more or less cut in stone and there isn't any way we can exploit one or more sensors to modify the timing. Up to this point, we've been able to play shenanigans with various sensors, but we did it in such a clever way that the car's PCM had no idea it was being tricked. Generally speaking, any modification to the sensors will trigger a check engine light, and depending on what sensor the PCM determines to be at fault, the PCM may use backup data in order to keep the engine running, but more often than not, that will result in decreased fuel economy. I'm afraid the ignition timing will more or less be a brick wall that we won't be able to penetrate. As a matter of fact, we have Jimbo under the Saturn right now for a report. So Jimbo, what are you seeing? Well, I'm under this nasty ass Saturn at the moment, and despite replacing the valve cover gasket, I can see the engine's still leaking oil. You might want to get somebody on that. Yeah, we'll look into that. How's the ignition crank position sensor looking? Well, hopefully you can see that it's in a bad location, and I don't think there's any way we can mod- Thanks, Jimbo. You see, on the Saturn's engine, and like most other engines, the ignition timing's done by the crankshaft position. However, on the Saturn, the engine's crank position sensor passes through the engine block and monitors the timing marks on the crankshaft inside the engine crankcase. So there's pretty much nothing that's easily hackable in this system. The only real solution is to piggyback something like a Speedwino to trigger the ignition system. Now that's certainly an option, but that's also something that we won't be doing today. Now it may be possible to copy the timing slots on the crankshaft and then transfer them to a steel disc and then mount them to the damper pulley on the front of the engine. That way we can offset the ignition timing. Now this is a rabbit hole of sorts because I don't fully understand how Saturn was able to implement the sequential fuel injection on this engine without using a cam sensor. I feel fooling around with the ignition timing outside the engine may cause more problems than it's worth, but we will look into it. So before we get started with today's experiment, let's take a moment and talk about some of the changes we made to both the Robo Throttle and the Lean Burn system. The Robo Throttle, well, it worked really well in a previous episode. The only issue we encountered was the acceleration times, and that was both annoying and a safety issue. You see, as far as safety goes, the car really needs to be able to accelerate normally and not take all day to get up to 60 miles per hour. So to correct this, let's first take a look at this cartoon. The way the smart throttle works is, the driver depresses the accelerator as he would normally do, but in our case, the accelerator pedal movement is converted into an electrical signal, and then that passes through a computer. At this point, the computer determines how much the throttle can be opened. It's very Orwellian, and thankfully this is just an experiment, and cars are not really built this way. Anyway, it doesn't matter how hard the driver presses on the accelerator, the computer, the cold and calculating computer, will only provide enough throttle for the best fuel efficiency. 
Well, this is a simple fix. We wrote a bit of code that turns off the smart throttle in the event that the throttle is depressed greater than 38%. And we were nice enough to set a 7 second delay to allow the driver full power during acceleration. Now, the 7 second delay is the key to this whole scheme, and the countdown will not begin until the throttle is eased back below 38%, so the driver actually gets all the time he needs to accelerate as long as the throttle is above 38%. It's not the greatest fix, but it does solve the problem. Let's give it a test. So here are some points of interest. This is the air fuel mixture for the lean burn system. Now the lean burn automatically turns off on acceleration, so there's nothing to worry about here. This of course is the speedometer, and it's kind of hard to see today, and I apologize for that. Of course, this is the lean burn indicator, and here is the smart throttle indicator. Let's see how fast we can get to 60 with the smart throttle and the lean burn active. Not too bad, but keep in mind we didn't save a drop of fuel either. All we did was give the computer more control and thankfully it allowed us to go a bit faster. For now. So the unmodified Saturn got the 60 miles per hour in a pathetic 13.96 seconds. Next, the dumb smart throttle refused to give up control and took a lazy 51.75 seconds to get to 60. Thankfully, the smart, smarter throttle played nice, and we got the 60 in 14.77 seconds. So it does take a few moments to transition out of the smart throttle mode, and this may account for why it took a fraction of a second longer than the unmodified time. And that's fine. Alright, so that's the smart throttle. Let's take a look at the lean burn system. The lean burn system was modified quite a bit since episode 18, but nothing really changed. We upgraded from the $100 wideband system to a quality Innovative Motorsports LC2 wideband system. This new wideband system was donated to the channel by one of our viewers. Thanks, Anthony. Anyway, we did a lot of behind-the-scenes testing and determined that the computer-controlled offset gizmo that we built provides the best way to tune the system. And we determined for the maximum boost in fuel economy, we could only bump the air-fuel ratio from 14.65 to 15.5. Yeah, so not much of a change, but this is all we could get away with. Any more of an offset, and we actually start to lose fuel efficiency. And that's because we can't modify the ignition timing. Apparently the two go hand in hand. So here are the two experiments sitting on the passenger seat. These two devices are only a few inches away from each other, but they're completely independent and neither device knows the other one exists. And the best part is, the PCM in the car has no clue that it's being lied to all the time. I say we put this collection of experiments to the test and see how far we can boost the fuel economy. For the fuel economy run, we're going to lap the 33 mile loop six times. It takes me about three hours to complete the test, but for the YouTube audience, it's just a few moments of music and some driving video.
Well, all right, we have some test results. So the question of the day is, will the Robo Throttle plus the Lean Burn system actually increase the fuel economy? Well, let's find out. For today's test, we traveled a total of 204 miles and consumed a mere 4.11 gallons of gasoline. Now that works out to an incredible 49.78 miles per gallon. That's practically 50 miles to the gallon, which is outstanding for a 25-year-old American-made car. Could this be alien technology? Meh, probably not. Let's take a better look at all the factors that contributed to our results and add them up. The tires were inflated to 45 PSI, the air conditioning and power steering pump were removed from the engine, and I'm not sure how much that helps, but I reckon we need to account for every little bit. So this car was rated by the EPA to deliver 40 miles per gallon highway driving. The EPA rating was done by driving the car on a chassis dyno, and the driver needed to follow this drive schedule. So over here is the vehicle speed, and down here is the time it takes to do the test, and it's in seconds. This EPA drive cycle runs about 765 seconds, or about 12 and a half minutes, and it covers 10.26 miles. On the other hand, our test loop is 33 miles of constant speed, however we do have four full stops. It's hard to say for sure, but I think our test loop might be more friendly for fuel economy testing. So the Robo Throttle combined with the Lean Burn does in fact improve fuel economy quite a bit actually, but how realistic is it? Well, since the Throttle and the Lean Burn system are completely automatic, the results should be very repeatable. However, if we were to test the car in a true urban environment, the results might not be as good, but certainly better than the EPA rating. So driving the Saturn around the loop for three hours is incredibly boring. So I took the time to watch the ignition timing data on the scan gauge. Basically, I was watching the gauge to see what the average ignition timing was and how much it varied. Yeah, I know, after a while, even watching the gauge gets boring. But I think I got a good feel for how the PCM is adjusting the ignition timing. After we finished the test and reviewed the data, I went back out and did some more fiddling. Now, this was a long shot, and I knew it, but I tried it anyway. So what I did was I took an extra knock sensor from our parts car and plugged it into the coupe's electrical system. So let me explain why I did this. You see, like I said before, the ignition timing for this car is more or less carved in stone. So here we have a snapshot of an ignition timing table. Now keep in mind, this is a random table that I pulled off the internet, and it's not specific to this Saturn. On this side of the table, we have the manifold pressure, and on the bottom, we have the engine RPM. So at 55 kilopascals of manifold pressure and 2000 RPM, the ignition timing will be 28.5 degrees before top dead center, unless another sensor tells the PCM to retard the timing for some reason. Now the knock sensor, well, this guy can generate a signal to tell the PCM to pull back on the timing. Now a possible flaw in my logic is, this engine was designed to run on cheap fuel, and the ignition timing accounts for that. On this engine, it's possible the knock sensor really doesn't come into play, unless a bunch of unexpected malfunctions occur and cause ignition knock. Anyway, with a knock sensor divorced from the engine block, but properly wired and nestled in a soft cocoon, well, perhaps we might be able to get a little bit more ignition timing. So we went back and put a few more miles on the car, but the timing data as shown on the scan gauge remained the same, so pulling the knock sensor didn't help us out a bit. That pretty much concludes the fuel economy experiments for this Saturn coupe, and the next thing we have planned for the coupe is to take it over to the scrapyard. No, don't worry, we ain't scrapping the car yet. We need to get the car weighed at the scrapyard because for the diesel transplant, we will likely need to shave a few pounds off the car and that'll be fun. Now it's definitely over for the coupe, but we'll continue with the fuel economy experience on the Saturn wagon. Off camera, we fixed the transmission and a few other issues. The only thing left to do on the wagon is to correct some cosmetic problems. And we expect to have the wagon back on the road this week. That's all I got for you folks this week. If you want to learn more about the Robo Throttle, we covered that in episode 19 and 20. The Lean Burn system was covered in episode 18. We put the links to those episodes in the description for your convenience. Now, if you don't mind, I have to ask you for a favor. If you like this video, please take a second and click on the like button. And of course, if you want to see more of this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps us out a lot, and it's free. Until next time.